All right, we'll let these guys get settled. We got Coach House, Mikai Wingo, Garcia. Uh, appreciate you making a few minutes for us this morning. And uh, we'll same procedure as the, the first round. If you have a question, raise your hand. We'll bring you a mic. And uh, who wants to get started? Go we'll to the back. Morning, Coach House. Happy Morning. New Year. Um, how are you managing um, all the defensive linemen that you aren't going to have in this game in terms of your starters, and, and what challenges do their, does their rushing game have? Yeah, well, first of all, they're excellent at running the football. We all know that. Um, got a talented back, good scheme. But I'm excited. We got next man up mentality, you know, and we got solid guys that have performed over the course of the season, and we got some young guys that have – embrace the opportunity and really embrace the preparation. So excited to see those guys compete. Yeah, to bounce off that, um, you know, obviously you know what you have in Makai, but who, who are you most looking forward to, I guess, kind of seeing get more opportunities on that defensive line? In this? You know, I think Jacoby and Guillory's had a great week of preparation, really a great couple of weeks. Savion's been solid all year. You know, it's an opportunity for him to get more, more snaps, and he's pr been productive in the snaps he's played. Uh, certainly excited to see Quincy play. So, I, I mean, it's a great opportunity. Down in front here, and then also down in front. Um, along that line, when Mason Smith went down on the first drive of the season, um, just what did you see from Makai and, uh, well, I guess, Jaquelin as well to kind of carry that workload from start to finish? Yeah, I think the number one thing that you saw was a, a don't flinch mentality. I mean, the guy next to me has been solid all year, both on the field and off the field, and he brings a hard hat mentality. He really embraces the traits we're all about. And uh, I think that's one of the reasons we've been able to play successful defense. Stay down front. Matt, uh, down here. Harold Perkins, what do you all see for him kind of moving forward and into the off season, going back inside, continuing to kind of be this versatile piece all over the place, what do you kind of see for his future? Yeah, that's the great thing about Harold is he is versatile, right? And, and we're going to put him in situations kind of like we have this year where he's going to be in, in an opportunity to play in space uh, and accentuate his talents. Um, as I've said earlier, the great thing about him is the sky's the limit. He's just now scratching the surface of learning football and how to play the game. Right here in this aisle here. Uh, sure, we'll go to the back. Then to the aisle. Coach, um, since uh, Mason Smith's injury, it seems like he goes to everything. He's here with the team participating. Um, how much uh, – some guys disappear when they get hurt. How much – are you impressed by that, his, you know, commitment to team? Yeah, Mason's a special guy, and he loves ball. And he loves his te teammates. He loves the brotherhood. Um, certainly uh, – that's a special thing, and I think, like, like, kind of like you alluded to, um, he is a little bit different, and he, he wants to be there. Uh, he's constantly learning. If there's a way to improve when you're hurt, it's it's to learn mentally, and I think he's done that. Hey, coach, um, with a guy like the Terrence Walsh, how has he sort of developed throughout the year, and is he sort of a could he help you out in t uh, this weekend's game? Monday's sure, he, he potentially absolutely could. And he's, you know, he's a guy that kind of has had the natural progression, right? You want to see a true freshman come in and make a difference on special teams. And at the end of the year, in particular, he's played really well there. He's developed over the course of the year. So if his number's called, we're confident that he'd go in and make plays. Go to the riser and back up front. During a new scheme, of course, physical reps are always key. But with guys like Mason Smith and Seven Banks, how do you prepare them to adjust? Can you repeat that question again? So in a new scheme, physical reps are always key. You want guys to be able to go through the motions and experience it. But with injured guys like Seven Banks and Mason Smith, how do you help them adjust to it? Yeah, I think that's where the meeting room is so important and, and, and learning on the field uh, through mental reps as you're watching your teammates. But certainly, there's no uh, substitution for, for snaps on the grass. Down in front here. Me. Um, Makai, you were, <clears throat> I mean, a freshman All-SEC guy at Missouri. How much do you feel like your game grew 
this year now that you've kind of had a whole season in the books uh, as a sophomore? Um, I would say it grew tremendously, honestly. You know, just when I first got here, you know, a question that media asked me was what I had to work on, and I said I had to be more stout in the run game and that I would, you know, just be paying attention to the small things and that and just trying to, you know, figure that out because I, that was the knock on me, just like, will he be able to stop the run? And, you know, coming in, I would say just we, we had great coaches and learning from guys like Jaqueline Roy and, and Mason, just just watching their technique and things like that, I would say my technique and, and ability to stop the run has grown tremendously throughout the year. So I would say that's been a difference. Okay, second row. Mikai, to bounce off that, I mean, you were kind of the new guy this year, and now you are essentially going to be kind of the veteran in that room next year, I guess. How do you go about doing that? What do you see from those young guys in that room? Um, I would say just, you know, coming in every day, just showing them how to work hard and, and leading by example, you know, not trying to be a guy that I'm not, you know, just because I got all these awards, not trying to, you know, just talk to somebody any certain way or, oh, you got to listen to me because I did this, this how it's done. No, just coming in, being a guy, just showing them how to work hard and, and things of that nature. Any additional questions for Coach McKay? Okay, take one in the back. Coach, if I could ask you about your son and the year he had at Dunham and and uh, he became a real star there in, in the Baton Rouge area. What was it like to, to watch him this year? Yeah, it's, it, first of all, it was it, the community embraced him there at Dunham. Uh, he learned tremendously from the head coach. Uh, it was a great senior experience and, you know, taking away the LSU thing and just being a dad, certainly proud and uh, excited to see where he goes from here. We go down front. Then there. Matt, you mentioned Quincy Wiggins there. What do y'all sort of envision for him? Is it maybe a defensive end, Jack linebacker, or somebody who can move and play both? Like, what does the future hold for him? Yeah, the thing about Quincy is he's give, he's got great size and athleticism and versatility. But yeah, we see him as a defensive end and could potentially slide inside on pass downs. Uh, Makai. Obviously, you made a decision to transfer, and you have certain hopes and aspirations. Did what, did you did you imagine all this? You get being, being an All American selection, and you guys winning the West and going to the championship game. Did you imagine the season that you've had personally, or or that y'all have had as a team? Um, you know, when I was making a decision to transfer, um, I, I would say th this is definitely something that I imagined. Just you know, being able to come here and play on the on a bigger stage, and just. With the, with the dream they, they told me when I was, you know, during the recruiting process, it was definitely, you know, we wanted to win a national championship here. And I would say we took a step in the right direction, you know. It didn't, you know, end how we wanted it necessarily, but we still have a chance to end the season on the right foot and get a win. Uh, Coach, <clears throat> curious, just defensive back, y'all took a ton of transfers um, going into this past season. Uh, what was the toughest part of making that work, and, and how do you think they did? Do you think they kind of exceeded expectations uh, in terms of kind of really coming through for you all in some big games? Absolutely, and I, I'll be honest with you. I love how those guys have bought into each other. Um, I've, lo I've loved how they've grown together. Probably the biggest challenge isn't necessarily scheme. It's learning how to play with another guy. Makai will tell you that. There's a certain chemistry that only snaps can can take. You learn personalities as you play, and personalities on the field aren't necessarily the same personality off the field. And uh, really proud of how those guys have put their personal egos aside and bought into the team. Run in the back, one in the front. Makai, okay, Nathan Rebus with News 6 CBS in Orlando. I know you just mentioned it about getting that last win. How important is it to get this final win this season? How excited are you just to play on January 2nd? Um, you know, I'm very excited. And I'll say every time we get an opportunity to go on the field, you know, we want to put the best product on the field. So it's very important for us to get the win, you know, just for the vibe in the locker room and to transition into next year. So it's very important. Right, we'll take two more up here and then one in the back. Matt, just curious what you saw out of Greg Penn this season. It seemed like he evolved toward the end of the year in particular. Uh, what do you want him to continue, also continue to work on into the offseason? Yeah, I think the thing that Greg did is he became more consistent as a player. Uh, more productive and more consistent, and he can take the next jump. You know, as we go into the off season, he, he's going to grind through, uh, changing his body, becoming a little more leaner, 
and growing as a player in the mental part of the game, but certainly pleased with the trajectory Greg has taken. We'll down here, and then we'll close up at that. Um, Matt, what, what is the most enjoyable or rewarding thing about you know going from the NFL back to college and being at this level again? Yeah, the relationships. I mean, you get to be around these guys in a different way. You know, the NFL, and don't get me wrong, there's some great things about the NFL, but it's grown men and it's a seven to five job. All right, here it's, you, you get to know these guys in a deeper way and uh, help them through different things. And I think that's been the most fun thing to be a part of. And then also, boy, just the, the challenge of learning and building a program and learning from Coach Kelly, it's been a, a blessing. Coach, um, after working with Brian Kelly, to your right, I'm sorry, in the back. Thanks. Uh, after working with Coach Kelly for a year, what, what were things you saw on a day-to-day -day basis, the reasons for the success, what makes him the coach that he is, and what's the future uh, moving forward? Well, I think, first of all, the thing about Coach Kelly is he's tremendous at building an organization. Uh, he's got a great feel for balancing the science of football with the player. Uh, you know, he, he builds a program that is comprehensive. A and I, I think that's what's so exciting. I mean, you learn every day from coach. And I think he's got a great pulse of the locker room, a great pulse of the community in a short amount of time, and the great pulse of the university. All right, coach, thank you. Appreciate your time. And we'll see you out there on Monday. Thanks. Appreciate you.